Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to another Neophyte Hello. Studio Wednesday stream. Uh, today <laughs> is a fucking awesome stream because we are going to be playing these submissions to our narrative game jam, which ran last month. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody who took up the challenge and submitted a game. You guys are amazing. Um, and so with me, as always, uh, I have Professor of Fiction, Pickney Benedict. I have fellow graduate research assistant who is currently on the road, uh, Dylan Davis. Live. Live <laughs> from a 2011 Kia Soul. We have finally with us here today such prestige, such class. And okay, the, yeah, the stream is, sorry to interrupt, but this, oh, yeah. the Twitch stream is fine. Perfect. Great. And Great. last but not least, we have Cleveland Benedict with us as well. Hi, sorry, my my computer just like disconnected from the internet right at introductions. Totally chill, that's why we have four people, just in case one of us bails or our computer decides to melt. And as always, I am Matthew four. Gordon. So today we are going to get started with some, uh, I think everything we're going to be doing today is twine? At least three of them, that's kind of where we're starting. Um, so the first game, and we'll jump right into this so we can get to as much as we can today, is um, one of our first submissions, The Haunting of Rutherford Manor, Rutherford Manor, by Toaster Schroeder. So let's get into it. We're going to play yeah. a bit, probably till the end, and we'll discuss as we go and after the fact. So getting started yeah. here. This one's neat. This one is neat. This was one of my favorites. Um, the dust of the desert comes to a standstill in the yard. The sun crawls behind the mountain that sleep, the mountains that sleep upon the horizon. Townspeople rest in their homes, unassuming, as they await the passage of the night. All the people of Vigor Town have abandoned the day, all but one. One brave man stands amidst the trail, the town sheriff, who will not be sleeping quite yet. For he has a job. Fate beckons for him at the late Rutherford Manor at the edge of town. Once a grand monument to of luxury and bliss, the Rutherford Manor now rests crumbling. It is laid unoccupied after nearly the entire Rutherford family has passed away, seemingly at once. Many fell to the plague, and all who didn't fell to each other, fighting to inherit the last of the Rutherford family riches. While their lives may be long past, the manor still bustles and beckons as if nothing has happened. Residents have claimed to hear shouting and gunfire from within the walls. Others have spread the word of shadows running amok within the windows, and some have even claimed to see the manor itself move. Oh, I like that. Ah, uh, yeah. Yes. The sheriff is Owl's used... moving manor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 the sheriff is used to these kinds of reports. Vigortown has seen its fair share of hauntings and possessions, and he has and he has more than enough experience. He opens his pistol, loading a set of silver rounds within the chamber. After snapping it shut, taking one last look around his surroundings, our hero marches into the manor to spare Vigortown from one more spectral infestation. So as an opening, right? As an opening, what do we think? Yeah, it's great. sweetly done, right? I mean, it's right in the middle of, of uh, you know, gothic, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it you know participates in like, you know, gothic, gothic traditions from you know from uh, uh, North Anger Abbey on up. Yeah, yeah, like Western Gothic. Yeah, yeah no, no, it's it, kind of yeah. nice. It's it's almost it's like. Um, uh, 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 what is the the Western Gothic? Brodigan? Richard Brodigan, yeah. Uh, uh, the the uh, uh, Hawkline Monster. Hawkline Monster, mm. thank you. Mm -hmm. God, losing my mind. But yeah, it's like <laughs> the Hawkline Monster. It's a it, you know it's participating in a couple of of different pleasing genres, and it doesn't seem right. to take itself too seriously. But I mean, it's good writing, right? I mean, I love the way that the that the um, uh, that the manor is personified. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, even to the point where it itself sometimes seems to move like Baba Yaga's hut. 
Um, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's nicely done. I'm also happy that the scene is just set. Mm. You know, like, we know where we are. We know we know that the dude has a job and it's taken him to that place. Right. We, we know tone. all the things we need to know. Yeah, you have we a got tone. It. And we yeah. like him, right? Like, we already like him because he's a... You know, he's a classic figure. He's a lone figure against something. Right. The knight know, errant over. of Arthurian lore, the mm -hmm. Gawain. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. He's a Gawain figure. That's right. Good. And, I mean, just as far as um, game design, you know, it is a text adventure, but the um, the font and the orange text on the black background, you know, it mm -hmm. might be a little Halloween-y, but it does the trick right away and gets you kind of well, into the mood as well. Yeah. I was gonna say yeah, it reminds and... me of like New Vegas's uh, Pip Boy. Yeah. The Pip Boy in New Vegas. Yeah, which oh, yeah, kind of right. itself has like a sort of vintagey feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the western. Um, right, yeah. But... Yeah. Continuing, the yeah, sheriff think... walks into a room of torn one, furniture. One, one, one quick thing. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Sorry. Just one quick this thing one. that I thought was interesting about this piece before we uh, continue on with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah is that um that most most game narratives are kind of in second person right like even if it's a third person perspective it's still second person because it's you doing the stuff yeah right. and so one of the things i thought interesting about this this twine narrative was that it is firmly third and it stays third yeah. throughout like I you pick what he does that, but i think that's a really good and i, I like that right i mean i don't yeah, the whole, right. second person bugs me I've never seen an example of second person that did not seem yeah. like a like a, a, a gimmick to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um and, and right. this does not seem gimmicky. This seems like a story. We're following the guy. We're gonna get to make some choices, but it's a story and we know how stories work. Well, and with it being right. third person versus second, right, instead of being like a player at the table, you're a little more of the DM where you're picking the the yeah. challenge that springs up. And that's yeah. fun. That's unique. Yeah. Yep. So. Anyway, sorry, that was my point. Continue. No, it was a very good point. No, it's well noted. Well yeah. noted. I hadn't yeah. even I hadn't even noticed that because it seems so mm -hmm. natural. Absolutely. Right. The sheriff walks into a room of torn furniture, misaligned wooden slabs and chip paints. The deep purples of the chairs and drapes are barely visible. The shards of broken glass lay everywhere. A few brass lanterns hang from the wall and cast dim candlelight. The sheriff stands and stares upon the scene. He scans the room, looking for any movement, any sudden shifts, any sign of a presence, waiting, waiting, and he hears it. So what do we want to go with? A crash, a howling of cold winds, or a uh, pounding within the floor? What are we voting for? I I vote for pounding within the floor. Just I bet that's we... going to be a heart. Well, that's, that's exactly. I was thinking, yeah, right. let's, go, let's go full on telltale heart. All right. Yeah. That's I'm always down two for, for pounding floor. within the floor. What about you, Dylan? I'm not, I'm all good for pounding within the floor. That's the only one pounding I didn't do. Pounding within the floor it is. A series of loud thuds draws the sheriff's attention to the manor floor. Small oh, patches right. of floorboard yeah. shake and rumble with each one, the thuds getting louder, the shakings getting more violent. More and more floorboards are shaking with each beating, and the patches are getting closer and closer. Closer, louder, closer, louder, closer, louder, bang or I wish, smash. I wish, I wish that the, the text actually graphically did that. Sure. I don't know how yeah. much control yeah. or the text you have, but... It would be great if the text actually did get bigger. I think you can change the uh, font closer. size in uh, yeah. in but twine. I like you the should, yeah. good graphic use of space because mm -hmm. it's the same thing on the page before this, right? That the yeah. waiting, yeah. waiting, waiting. That it the the graphic use of the space on the page replicates the feeling of the of the narrative. Yeah, no, um, using right, it, right. the screen to its fullest really changes yeah. uh, twine from being like prose fiction to kind of borrowing from poetry right and using right. that yeah. page oh, that's right. um banger smash loud, oh sorry closer and louder is how sound's supposed to work if my linguistics degree is getting me anywhere i think <laughs> as things get closer they tend to get louder fair true um don't pick bang because i think the bang track is actually broken so okay 
kick the other one. The boards can only move so much. Several planks go flying as it jumps out. <laughs> a restless gremlin clad in rags, laced with gold, soars up above the sheriff as if it could fly. It latches to one of the walls, and it's not staying there for long. I like restless. A restless yeah, right. yeah. clad in gold. Yeah, ADHD. <laughs> The beast leaps down towards the sheriff, ready and able to strike with its piercing claws. The sheriff almost moves out of the way, but is grappled to the ground by the leg. The sting of the claws digging into his leg... The sting of the claws digging into his leg is immediate, and it is sharp, and the pain of its grip is oppressive. As the sheriff reaches for his gun, the foul gremlin fills his mind with corrupted arcane messages. It is too late, they are all gone, and you will be next... The sheriff slowly draws his pistol. The time of the rougher forwards is over. You latch on to an empty shell. He aims. Leave this nightmare behind. He pulls the trigger. Before this terrible beast can utter another horrid word, the sheriff puts a cylinder of silver right between its eyes. It collapses and the grip loosens. Good build and release of tension. Yeah. I love the scene. 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 Mm -hmm. I love the alliteration of cylinder of silver. Oh shit, I didn't even notice that, but yeah. No, yeah, that's cool. Really good use of sound in the language. It's like restless gremlin, right? Well, There's not yeah. a I mean restless is not a word that we would typically use with you know for for for, for you know monster like that, but mm -hmm. restless gremlin just sounds really nice. It does. Yeah. Slowly he gets up in the the wounds in the arm will heal after a few moments, but the pain will linger for a long time. He starts limping and searches something to tend to the wound with. A couple more poltergeists to shoot would also be nice. He walks past a large amount of decrepit furniture. Bleach stains and blood stains are plenty. A couple of firearms, canes, tobacco pipes, and other items litter the many rooms he walks through. The, gremlin, the, word, <laughs> the gremlin's words were far from wrong. The Rutherford lineage is essentially ex extinct. There are no heirs and no friends to inherit their belongings. Not even any servants that take over for their masters. They are mere history now. But to the sheriff, that's not important. What's more important is either tending to his injury or finding more sprites to smite. Spirits to smite, rather. What do we got? I want to find more spirits to smite myself. But more spirits. I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a Viking helmet. So Cleveland, what do you think? Let's go. Let's go hunting. And Dylan. Uh, yeah. For Pokey sure. Pokey noodling for spirits. <laughs> Finding more spirits to smite. Oh yeah, this is a long screen. He must get this done. The Rutherfords are waiting for their resolution. And he is here to bring it to them. There is no time to waste. He carries on throughout the house. Though he cannot move as ably as he could before, he still beats on with determination. The ghosts are harder to find than he expected them to be. They don't reveal themselves as eagerly as the gremlin did. They hide, they creep, and they wait for something to lure them out. It's likely a holdover from Rutherford's time in life. They were reclusive people. Seeing one of them in public under any circumstances was considered a sign of good luck in this town, oh, even if the right. circumstances weren't ideal. They didn't care much for company. They took perfect comfort in their riches in their home. They are not breaking their streak now. For what must have been hours at this point, they have not so much as peeked their heads out. Any and all spectral sounds or strange sights that the sheriff sees are either brief anomalies or merely the tricks of his own mind. It can be difficult to tell which it is, or if it's a false alarm at all. Life without the Rutherfords has been different, for certain. The town has been less active, the nights lonelier, and the people more uncertain. The fate of all their belongings has yet to be seen, as nobody can rightfully lay claim to their legacy. It simply stands here, waiting to erode with the next sunset. They wait and they wait, 
and the sheriff cannot wait as long as they. They are not anywhere to be seen. All the sounds he hears... All the sounds he hears that he doesn't make, they mean nothing. Every odd thing he sees does nothing. There is nothing here, but he knows that can't be right. That can't be true. He keeps looking, his eyes glancing back and forth, side to side, his mind eager for answers. Where are they? Where are the creeping shadows? The eerie cries of revolvers once fired. Did they exist? Did any of it exist? Who had given him the reports? He doesn't know. He can't remember anything. At this point, all that lives in his mind is the desire to finally see a Rutherford again. He wants their blessing. He wants their presence. He wants their gold. And he never gets any of it. At a well-set dinner table, he lays with his face buried within its polished hardwood surface. He clutches an empty model revolver in one hand and an empty ale canteen in the other. Below his arms and head lie a discordant pile of legal documents, letters, and photographs. His pain sobs have long since been suppressed by a never-ending slumber. You lift your hands up off the back of his head. You've seen all that his mind is willing to lend you. You grab your documents and chart down the important details. Mr. Frank Rutherford, former police deputy, date March 18th, 1982, time 11.18 p.m., address 413 Pinkton Drive, Gallic Russia, affliction, grief, mania, behaviors, rapid pacing, excessive alcohol consumption, daydreaming, inane ramblings. That's funny. Those are my behaviors, too. <laughs> can, can, I can confirm. <laughs> <laughs> He's not waking up anytime soon. Your job is done here. You pack up your briefcase, leave a business card on the counter, and turn around to head out for the night. What a dour soul. Nobles are always so dramatic. The Rutherfords were the noblest there were. You shall arrange for Mr. Rutherford's transport to a correctional facility in the morning. End. So, thoughts. This is a neat little I just short like that story. It's... Mm-hmm. Yeah. It maintained I, I, its I, I, tone I, throughout. Yeah. Yeah. I also just like that it... Like, I, I think that this is proof that if you gamify... Like, if you, if you took this as a short story and you handed it to a stodgy MFA student, they'd probably be stodgy about it, right? Yeah. But the, when it's... And I think it's just a good short story in general, but, like, as a Twine narrative, I think it's even more fun. Because yeah. just making a couple of those choices really amplify the meaning of the story, right? Well, so, and then when the anachronesis comes, right, that moment of self-revelation... And you understand it right. has anything like what you believed it was, and the sort of the you is is actually someone observing, you know, you know from this person's mind what you know what has yeah. happened. That's a that's a neat switcheroo. Like I was really surprised and and taken aback. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's cool. Very cool. We're passing and that's great. Yeah, that's well done. And that again was the haunting of where is it Rutherford, Rutherford Manor, Manor by yeah. Toaster Struder. Town is such a good name for a, for a, a weird small town. Yeah, yeah, it just sounds like a it. Even the title just sounds like an old gothic story, like. Yes, sir. Okay, so we're at, what, 423? So what's the Actually, next? I should induce this one first. It is, uh, and I pronounce this Lila? Lila. Lila. Thank you. Yeah, I wasn't sure on that one. By Jill Tuck. And this is uh, absolutely a fantastic story. This one uh, came in first for, let's look at our results here. 
uh, for most compelling narrative and second for most compelling character. And while we're here, uh, Haunting of Rutherford Manor, that actually came second for most compelling narrative. So both yep. of these are some of our heavy hitters. Um, so let's get into this one. The first thing you remember, you're walking through downtown, downtown Manhattan early in the morning. The only thing you know about yourself comes from the silver bracelet on your right wrist. The small plate between the links reads, Lila. You're trying hard to pull something to the surface of your thoughts that might tell you more about yourself, but nothing will come. You're too distracted. You realize this when you suddenly bump into someone and he turns towards you angrily. Hey, watch it. Where do you think you're going? What do you think you're doing? Sorry, I should read instead of just filling it in with my mind. Uh, do you apologize or stand your ground? What I, so real quick, first off, excellent choice. Gets you right into a scene, right into a conflict, and then yep. your choice is on you, the uh, the player. So what do we yeah, vote? They, apologize yeah, or stand? Yeah. So swiftly. You know? Yes. Yeah. And I mean, City, it's... So I doubt apologizing will do anything <laughs> <laughs> that's fair i i am yeah, gonna go with standing apologize that's apology is a very bad choice <laughs> you stare at the man unwilling to apologize Good. he didn't move out of your path either and you don't feel like you're the one at fault the man lets out an exasperated sigh my bad he says flatly yeah. He rolls his eyes and continues on his path in a huff. I consider that a moral and personal victory. <laughs> you look up at the pastel clouds as the sun fails over the skyline and you sigh. I've never, okay, ever heard clouds described as pastel. I really like that. Mm -hmm. um, the harder you try to remember how you ended up alone in Manhattan in the early hours of the morning, the more your head hurts. It's as though something is trying to keep you from your own past. You examine your bracelet again. You're sure Lila has to be your name, but that doesn't give you much to work with. See, that you... makes me think Lila is not, in fact, our name. I think it's I like our agree. creator or something. Yeah, or, or, mm -hmm. it's, a, or it's an acronym or... A but, company. But that, like, that is, that's a misunderstanding, but it's a good misunderstanding. Who wears jewelry of their own name? I would think it would be the name of someone important, like a significant other, a parent, a family member. Uh, rappers wear jewelry of their own name. Okay, yeah. fair. <laughs> when I, so Lila's a rapper. I, I got the sense, too, that the, uh, the bracelet sounded quite... Um, like medical, it sounded like a fish, yeah, you, you know, not so much right. It's utilitarian, it's not yeah. a it doesn't seem yeah, not a decoration, yeah. right? I think medical yeah. is a good, uh, good conclusion to draw from that. I, I agree. You shake your head and the keep walking. Oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> no, shoot, man. I, I'm really good at starting my points right as you continue reading. I'm uh, sure you're running on your phone, of, uh, there's probably a delay, so all is forgiven. Yeah, true. True. Uh, so one of the things that I think is really interesting about this one, and is also reflected in the previous one, mm -hmm. is, um, and this I feel is actually a stark contrast from many Twine narratives that I've read from many, many people, is yeah. that I like that the choices are physical. Like, mm -hmm. you're choosing between Bang Bang or Crash, you're choosing between, you know, like floorboards crunching or or you're choosing to stand your ground or apologize. Like these are physicalized choices yeah. rather than yeah. like ponder your existence or continue on. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. They, and, and they're, and they're, they are, that just and the choices lead all to energy from a story. Right? Yeah. Presumably the yeah. howling wind. I, I'm going to go back and play the, the Rutherford Manor one because mm -hmm. I want to see like yeah. what happens when the howling wind, because I'm assuming it's not yeah. a gremlin, right? And, yeah. And, right. You know, right. and, and I forget what the other choice was, but they, they were stark choices, right? Yeah. They weren't just variations on a single choice. No, they were three completely yeah. different short stories. Like... Yeah, and that, that's really brave because that just gets mm -hmm. you into so many branches so quickly, right? Oh, my um, God. It's, you're yeah. writing three short stories. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you shake I'm your sure head. It all affects oh. the ending, too. Yes, like, I'm sure, I, I would like, assume. Choice. Yeah. No, that, that 
both of these have been really solid examples of what you can do just kind of as a baseline with twine. Um, Mm -hmm. You examine your bracelet again. You're sure Lila has to be your name, but that doesn't give you much to work with. You shake your head and keep walking. Beside you, layers of hover cars stretch towards the sky, moving together through vertical traffic layers, and you wonder whether you've left a car somewhere. Hey, honey, the voice comes from your right. From down an alleyway, shadowed by towering building and untouched by street lamps, do you look for the speaker or ignore him and keep walking? And are we sure that kick his ass isn't one of the choices here? Um, I would imagine <laughs> I that if we choose to engage with this person, hopefully that will be an eventual uh Yeah, I don't option. think we ignore that shit. I think we call that shit out right now. <laughs> That's harassment. <laughs> Yeah, we hey, don't honey, back down. We don't ignore yeah, harassment. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not going to... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> you look down the alley and find a man watching you. There's an unsettling smile on his lips. He keeps looking over your shoulder like he's waiting for someone else to join him. Do you stay and see what happens or run? Run? We're not going to run. This is Lila. Lila's a bad... We're already committed... Yeah, but yeah. a two v one is not favorable in many circumstances. My instincts tell me to run. I feel like we have some secret power that we're not. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Very okay. Well. okay. Okay. That's yeah, convinced no, me. Sort of born, I feel like there's there's a real born identity vibe here. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, willing Hannah. I'm willing to put Lila in. in so we stick around though you know rationally that this is a bad idea you realize that you aren't scared you stand still watching the man until you hear multiple sets of footprints approaching you from behind where are you headed the man in front of you asks doesn't matter you tell him i'm going there alone you tune into the people around you and you feel a group starting to surround you trying to drive you toward the alley Still, you don't look at them. Your pulse and pace remain even. Whoever you really are, you realize that you aren't a coward. Someone laughs, and the voice is different this time. He asks you why you'd be alone on a night like this. And then you feel a hand grab your shoulder. Don't touch me, you say firmly. Someone else laughs, and you feel two more hands on you. As one, they pull you back towards them. Do you fight or run? fight i think that goes without saying oh yes yeah I mean, you, you don't need to ask <laughs> <laughs> you re- you react on reflex you pull your right arm free and in one fluid motion sink your fist into the gut of the man restraining your left arm in the same movement you kick back and knock someone else's feet out from under him. you grab the arm of one of the men and bring your other hand down on it swiftly in a sickening snap and yeah, uh, typo. Yeah, and a sickening snap echoes through the air from behind, from beneath your hands. The man whose arm you've broken cries out in pain. He exchanges an incredulous glance with the others. Someone grabs your left arm again. You reach behind you without looking to see which of the attackers it is and pull him forward, ducking as he flies over your head and lands on the street. His arms bending unnaturally beneath him. Now. Terror is etched on their each of their faces. Two of them bend down to help their fallen one stand, and they support him after they pull him to his feet. They all run, scattering as they hurry down the street and away from you. You count them as they retreat and see you've just fought off five people by yourself. You turn away and continue down the street in the way you were headed before. As you walk, you realize there's no logical explanation for how well you just fought. All right, you guys called it. <laughs> you don't you don't remember having any training in self-defense or in combat, but you tell yourself that doesn't mean you didn't have it. It's not like you remember anything else either. Still, you saw how scared those men were as they ran away, and it frightens you. You snap someone's arm with your bare hands, and you threw a full-grown adult like a rag doll. You're scared of yourself. See, that's more anagnoresis, right? 
Mm. More, yeah. more self-revelation. We'll get specific yeah, about clearly, that. Yeah. Any story that begins with a character without an identity yeah. is it, right is naturally a story of anagnoresis. Yeah. It is naturally right. a story of, of it's going to have to be a journey of self-discovery and the discovery can't be an anodyne discovery. You're not going to yeah. discover that you're right. just a, a normal person, right? I mean, unless yeah. you're K yeah. in Blade Runner 2049. Um, <laughs> right. Is, yeah, right. You're, you're going to find out that you're something, probably something that you abhor, right? Yeah. And the first sense of that here is you frighten yourself. The things that you do, the things that you're able to do it naturally and instinctually are also frightening to you, or at least the fact that they frighten other people frighten you, frightens you. And that's, right. that's, a, that's a neat movement toward an agnoris. Well, yeah. and a quick aside, because you imagine... brought up... Oh, go ahead. No, 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 you, you go ahead. So as a quick aside, you, you brought up Blade Runner, you know, and you said that he... he it doesn't have a revelation that he's special, but I would argue in the ending of 2049, like kind of the thesis of the work is that any mundane person can be special if they choose to better the world, right? Because he enables yeah, the special he, people he, to come it, together. It and, really is, is yeah. special. It's just funny that the, that the movie makes you think he's going to yes. be right the next yeah. you know the next step in human evolution mm -hmm. and it turns out no right. he's just a, he's just a replicant like yeah but replicants yeah. Are, are actually you know replicants are pretty special yeah right right yeah it's very cool great movie no it's anyway. a good magnificent like mm -hmm. i think it's great yeah, yeah. you know that he believes like we think it's going to be another neo yeah. or you know any of these things where of course the protagonist is the one we've all been waiting for who will return back right. to the force, et cetera, et cetera. And it turns out, no, he's actually just a dude who he's doing his job. Right. <laughs> Which in a sense is, it's, is a very good anachronism for that story. Right. Like it, yeah. it, because you, because you are led to believe like it, it is an inevitable thing that, that you come to find out that is what that is world changing about that story. So, yeah. And yeah. what I was going to say, actually, this kind of take, takes us back into Jill Tuck's thing is that while we've gotten this an early anagnoresis of the power, I suspect, and I kind of know because I played it, but mm -hmm. I suspect that we get even another anagnoresis at the end of the story, which recontextualizes the way that we thought about this anagnoresis, right? So right. Yeah. in that sense, it's really brilliant. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, but the, we're at, it, yeah. It's opening up these different layers of the character's self-revelation. Yeah, right, right, mm -hmm. which is really cool. Yeah, but we're at 440, and I think this one still has another. 15, no, no, no. Yeah, we probably, yeah, we probably. I mean, folks can still play these, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think let's yeah. get. Uh, Even if we just get an introduction to them yeah. and talk about their virtues, that's fine. Yeah, but we probably do yeah. need. To move on. Do we want to do another scene of this or jump to the next one? No, nah, we can jump to the next one. Let's jump. I think to the we next got one. our initial anagnosis. Yeah, we, yeah. leave it open. Yeah, Leave it and open. it's well yeah. worth playing. Like people should very much so. People should definitely play this game. Yeah, and as a reminder, um, all the games submitted to our game jam can be found on our jams page, uh, which is itch.io forward slash jam forward slash neophyte hyphen studios hyphen game jam. Um, it can also be found through the neophyte studios page. Um, and then you just move over to the submissions tab. Uh, these games, of course, can also be found through any of the creators' pages. So if you like Lila or you like Haunting of Rutherford Manor, you can go over to Toaster Schroeder's page or Jill Tuck and uh, play these in browser, which is fantastic because you can even play them on mobile if you're stuck in a car like Dylan. So yes, sir. <laughs> A lot of those games are browser based. You can play. I could play them on my phone. Yes, so and here's just one a great way to mobile mobile make story. You know? Honestly, it is because you could host it on a website and just have a link to point to it. Um, okay, here's one I'm really excited for. We've got wonderful art. This is going to be Sleepless from Tholanex. Tholanex. Oh, two links. Tholanex. Two links. 
Or is this I the like penguin this one. one? This is. So yeah, yeah, we've got a bit of introduction I want to go with here. Um little penguin is trying to get some shut eye after a bit of platforming. Uh, this project is exploring what I can do with pure platformer. Um, initially, I thought of a story about a penguin traversing between layers of dreams via either sleeping or playing a song on the gramophone, which would wake him from the current dream. But I decided to go with this simple story due to the time constraint. Um, and this is one I would love to see more work done. I, I would... I yeah. think there's a no, basis of a really that, cool the game. The idea of waking from a dream into another dream, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in layers of dreams, that's, you know, that's really exciting. But I, I love the idea that somebody submitted a platformer to Ooh, a, got music. a narrative game. Jam, yeah, right? we got like, music. It, yeah. Oh and I'd, God, I'm... I'm they, and, I mean, there are big... Actually, let me, let me go here. platformers are becoming more of a thing, like the last... Yeah, like Celeste. Yeah, totally. And I'll I let us chat more before I get mode. back into it. And I, I really like the... I really, really like the Penguin. I really like him mm -hmm. as a character. I think this one actually won... Or it got second place in most compelling character. Uh, um, it got... Maybe that's not the best way to find this so. results. I know this one did very well as well, and you can see why. Yeah, number one in most compelling character, number two in best <laughs> use of game mechanics to deliver story. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, and I, I've talked to this guy quite a bit on the Discord. He's really cool. Um, he, he's been really helpful figuring out planning the next one. But yeah, he's a, he's a cool guy. And the thing that I love so much about this penguin is from the vantage of the 2D, you could mm -hmm. al almost see him as like one of those old timey uh, plague doctors. And, <laughs> it, I, and I think that it could work for that story really well, uh, mm -hmm. especially if you make the disease kind of paramount in it because the, the world itself looks really sick. You'll see it as you play. Yeah. But the, the world looks quite sick and, and gangrenous, you know? Uh, well, so let's I, get I'm into excited. it. And, and Dylan, uh, it's been a minute since I played this one. Do you remember the controls offhand? Is it, um, it should just be WASD and space. Yes, yeah, and space. Okay, that's what I thought. I just don't want to fumble around. Yeah. Um, in case the music yeah. is loud and drowns out our conversation, I apologize. Uh, I'm able to hear, and hopefully everyone's able to hear me, but if it f is not balanced on the stream... Uh, enjoy this commentary free playthrough. And if you can hear us, <laughs> all like the better. You could probably, like, mute, like, if you go to your audio mixer, you could mute Google Chrome for a moment. I don't like the music. I want to hear the music. I mean, yeah, the music is good. I'm just making sure it's not balanced. Okay, That's okay. fine. We'll go ahead. Thank okay. God someone is here. Who are you? Yeah, this one's, this one's short. I'm Dory. I've been stuck in here for as long as I can remember. Please, you gotta help me out. I'm afraid I can't help. I don't even know why I'm here. Again, it's just like me and my students. <laughs> <laughs> ah, mm. <laughs> That's gonna be a problem. You see... I definitely want to see you like this. I... It's cool. He hasn't cool. been able to get cool. some sleep. I love quirky little platformers, so... I would love for you to wake up from this nightmare. Man with horrible growth on your eye. Yeah, that's terrible. And like the the pixel art here is really fantastic. These characters are really expressive. I love the little particles behind our penguin. No, the the when he runs and he leaves that kind of big fart balloon behind him. Yeah, the cloud. He told me that that was accidental. He didn't intend for it. And I was like, you have to keep that. That is awesome. No, yeah. yeah. I also encouraged him because it's so good looking, and it adds the dream like. Yes, it really does add to the dreamlike quality of the game. 
So you can jump on walls. It plays a lot like Super Meat Boy. It does, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, it's actually, it is, it's, it is a pretty difficult platformer. And I just gotta say, right, it, it doesn't give you the fact that you can dash, it lets you fail once, understand optical, obstacles. Yep. Oop. So, so Pinkney, as a professor, what, uh, how does that fit into your pedagogy? <laughs> well, my pedagogy is all about failure. <laughs> and, and letting students fail, except I don't tell them they can dance. I let them find it out by themselves and, like, press every key on the keyboard. Right. No, I, I, I think that if failure is the best I mean, failure is pain. <laughs> the pain of failure is amazing. I really love the death animations. Yeah. You just kind of, like, melt. I was... I, I mean, <laughs> you might not be able to beat this again. I, it took me probably... 20 minutes to get through the last little part. And yeah. My girlfriend was like, oh my god, how have you not given up yet? I'm like, he submitted to the jam. Yeah. <laughs> it's my duty. <laughs> I have to finish well, it. Well, in that little bit of story, right, let's talk about how the story is working in this game. It's enough of a, a compulsion to make me interested in this world. The mechanics are yep. tight, simple and tight and they definitely don't draw away from the story, right? We made it around this little loop and we're back to this guy. And I, I genuinely want to see what's going to happen with this story. It's weird. It's interesting. Yeah. There we go. See, I, I literally would never be able to finish this game. I, I, I... <laughs> You're not coordinated enough. No, no, I, I could never. I, 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 I would at first level. <laughs> <laughs> ah, <laughs> I made it. I just kept moving. <laughs> Yeah, the music is great. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Just the variety of things that this uh, game jam uh, brought out. I'm really excited. Oh, I'm so pleased. I was so happy to see like what some people doing 2D, some people doing 3D, some mm -hmm. people doing. I was so happy to see it all. And we got our VR game too that I was hoping for. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now this I genuinely don't know how to get past. In my opinion, that's if you want to make you know digital narrative for the future, developing for Quest is the place to be. Yeah, especially with it being so wide open right now. Yep. Yeah, and the fact that they're open, that they're creating the, that uh, uh, they're you know they're opening the walled garden of the Oculus door. Yeah. Um, you know to be more steam like. Yeah. Dylan, any tips how to get past this part? I keep dashing at the uh, flamethrowers, and I, I can't uh, get past them. Oh. I like that yeah. that little penguin has so much blood. <laughs> <laughs> what is that yeah, about? Yeah, it's a lot of blood. It's like a tip. Um, you actually have to you have to go on the back wall, the wall behind you, and you have to jump up to the ceiling, and then you have to jump under and around, and then you have to leap from there. It's really hard. No, seriously? Oh yeah, god. It's really hard. It's it is very difficult. You let yourself fall and dash, and then you yes. jump after you dash. Got it. Yep. I genuinely don't know if I'm capable of that. Yeah, it's okay. We got ten minutes left in the stream, so we probably ought to move to the next one. And that's like most of the story. I, to to fill you in on the rest of that first little demo, you, you when you get over that puzzle, that's the last one. You drop down a hole, and then there's a bed to go to sleep. Yeah. yeah. But okay, I can say that. Yeah. 
next chapel. Yes. Right. Yeah. You know, the, you, you've got now you've got the mechanics down. This is kind of a tutorial, and then you yep. get to go to sleep and you enter dream, right? And, you and have, this like, is a different mm. like narrative tradition. Yeah, I think like, it was like uh, the nineteen well, it was no nineteenth century, late nineteenth century uh, right. comic strip called um, uh, uh, Little is Little Nemo uh, mm. in Dreamland. Mm -hmm. Have you all ever seen Little Nemo? Yes, long, long oh, time man, ago. I mean, crazy, like hallucinatory. You, yeah, you, you can't believe it's like a traditional American comic strip. Um, yeah. I mean, the yeah. 1900s are full of opium. So yeah, yeah, well, the, no, the it wasn't like so. that, and like Crazy Cat, same kind of thing. But that these these dream narratives are, you know, I mean, I mean, I love dream narratives. Yeah, but yeah. Each level could be like you can ask a. Uh, Eva, it's the tra Traum novel, right? Oh yeah, the Traum novel. <laughs> she nodded. <laughs> yeah. That's all I hope for from Eva. If she yeah. dies, my day is made. Yep. So what were you yeah, saying? Like we each level about could, the, yeah, like each oh, level could end at a bed, <laughs> and then you move on to the next level, which is like a different type of dreamscape. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That would be awesome. I would love it. Yeah, I mean, so I think, that's, a, that's a platformer, but it's also it's definitely a story. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if you could write each of those levels in scene, which you totally could, you could totally like if you meet, you know, you, you reach the midway point and you talk to somebody and then they do the emotional turn and mm -hmm. you think you're going to get out, but you don't. And then you make it to the next bed, you know, and each each level could be a scene and you could write that. If you write a hundred of those, you've got a book, you've got a game novel, right? Yep. Yep. And it would be great. I would love it. I would love it way more than novels. <laughs> anyway, so what's the last one? So the last one we're going to do vehicle here. Oh, yeah, Come vehicle. On. Man, this is a quirky, weird, weird fucking game. Good, good. I love quirky, weird fucking games. That's, yeah. that's all I want for our game jams. If we ever...